Hello everyone and welcome to Gearock Farms. In today's video, we got some stuff to do here in the shop. We uh, finished up with chores this morning and right now dad's sawing some uh, lumber for a customer, which is great to see that sawmill in action. But as for us, we got some stuff to do here in the shop. We gotta take care of the, the Farmall MTA. It sounds like the other day my brother Mason uh, tried using it and he had to jump start it to get it to start. It sounded like uh, when he was uh, cranking over the battery, it was dead and uh, and he thinks that possibly something might be uh, shortened out somewhere. Like maybe the cable ran through, rubbed through. He said he saw sparks, so maybe uh, no big deal. Something was just wet or something like that, but we gotta look into that. That could be an issue. And then uh, we also gotta work on the, the Bobcat S570 today, our, our older skid steer. We got some uh, upgrades for that thing. But uh, first, I want to get uh, things looked at here on this farm all super MTA. I think I'm just going to pull the seat off quick because I don't know how long it's been since this battery's been changed, and it could just be an old battery. And I think it's uh, just uh, four bolts or those two bolts. Maybe I have to loosen the back one so we can swing it back, but. That shouldn't be uh, too hard to get to the battery. Yep, just them two front bolts and then these rear bolts were loose enough where it just swiveled on them. I'm trying to find a date here to get a rag to clean this thing off. I am not seeing a, a clear date on this guy, but it doesn't look like it's uh, frozen or bulged out. It looks like it's in okay shape from the top here so uh we're gonna put the charger on might uh just disconnect the the power side of things in case there is a a draw or if something is rubbing which i don't think so it's on an old tractor like this everything's pretty simple we have our ground cable here which grounds right there and then we have our power cable which runs out here by the shifter along and right to here and i don't see uh, anywhere on that cable where anything's wore through there's a little here right by the shifter but it's not wore through the the rubber not even close. So I don't think that's the problem. I'm guessing that uh, he was just trying to crank and, and didn't have enough juice. But we'll see here. How to check connection. We got some spark in there, which is good. Doesn't look like anything's getting hot anywhere else, but we do have the circuit kind of closed off. And we have the hot cable going to the starter. That's all disconnected. Our charger saying it's trying to do something. I just put it on a, a low setting, give this thing a slow charge. I'm hoping that the starter's not messed up. I'd hate to have two M's on the farm that have bad starters but I doubt it. I think Mason, he's smart enough where uh, once he knew it wasn't gonna start, I'm, uh, I'm sure he wouldn't have kept trying to roll it over. But to give you an update on that, if you guys remember the video where uh, I fixed our, our starter here quick on our straight M, well, that fell apart again on dad. I think it's just getting to the point now where those parts are just kind of coming of age and. And we're just gonna have to take it to an actual uh, starter shop and they'll uh, 
rebuild this one with new parts or they'll just give us a, a rebuilt one ready to go which is more than likely what will happen so uh, that's an update on the other m and uh, what it has going on it uh, needs a starter but the farmal mta hopefully it's just a, a battery that sat too long over the winter and uh, maybe the battery's just getting a little old hopefully that's all it is but we'll give that time to just sit there and charge In the meantime, while that's charging, I'm going to go grab the old skid steer here and, and pull it in the shop so that's ready to go and, and work on once uh, we have time this afternoon. Kids here all parked and ready to go for later to work on. Uh, quickly here, I'm gonna jump back onto the cattle side of things. Uh, we gotta let the cows in, and uh, I also have a cow in the bull barn that I gotta bring back to the dairy herd, so we gotta jump back over into that sector of the farm. Dad locked the gate here maybe an hour ago to keep this cow uh, next to the bull. It was time for her to get bred. Some of these guys got locked outside for the past half hour or so, so I'm gonna let them back in so they can get their feed and, and water because he's had more than enough time to do his job over here. But let's uh, push up the feed first. Come on. Come on, girls. Come on. Come on, girls. Okay, we are finished with letting in the cows. Also, we have the heifer barn all taken care of. Now it's back to the fun stuff. Checking on this. Looks like uh, we are charging, which is great. I don't smell anything hot. I think everything going here is, is A-OK. -okay. And now it is time for the fun projects for the day. I have some new parts to put on this uh, S570 Bobcat skid steer of ours, courtesy of Friday Parts. Friday Parts is sponsoring the video today, so thank you to Friday Parts. I'm very excited because this skid steer has been hard at work in the early mornings, uh, in the dark, this spring with the, the damp weather. That's the best time for us to uh, haul the manure and uh, scrape the barn lot. So this skid steer is in need of uh, some upgrades when it comes to the lighting. Friday Parts sent us some uh, LED lights. They also sent us an air filter, which uh, I think we're in need of being, uh, we just had a, a long winter of bedding barns and hauling round bales around. I'm willing to bet that filter's pretty dirty and it is time for uh, a new one. So let's go over here and, and unbox our parts. So I ordered a complete light kit for this skid steer and uh, they label the package right and left for the front lights. That's uh, really nice, I really like that. And then I obviously have the rear lights over here which uh, are universal I believe. Got some hardware in there. Sweet. 
Now that I got everything unpacked, I wanted to say that uh, when it comes to shipping, it was super fast. They have some really fast shipping. As for finding the parts, they have a nicely laid out website where you can put your model and machine in and it'll give you a list of all the parts that they offer. And they have a lot of parts to offer. It's kind of a one-stop shop. They have a wide range of parts for a wide range of machinery, all in the, the heavy equipment sector, the agriculture sector, the construction type equipment. They had kits, which also made it really nice for uh, picking out these parts. Instead of having to get the individual lights, I could just select the model skid steer and then click on the light kit for this model specifically. These will be a really nice upgrade because as you can see, they are LEDs, which I am super excited about and same with the rears. And then even for the filters, I seen that uh, there was a lot of filter kit options. So if you wanted to service your skid steer, you could uh, just buy the whole filter kit and not have to make a filter list and order each and every individual filter. Their website made it really convenient when it came to getting parts. But we're not doing a full service today. We're just doing the air filter. We're not uh, quite due to change oil and other filters. So we are gonna start with the air filter, which is in the back of the skid steer here. Oh yeah, it was time. Fins were starting to crinkle together and collapse and look at the dust we got in that thing. And uh, just to check part numbers, it looks like we got the same number here. It's good to know that uh, a guy can order parts, aftermarket parts, and uh, they're gonna fit his machine and he doesn't have to worry about filters not working right or fitting. Peace of mind, I guess you could say. Then we also have the inner filter too which is really nice because it sold as a kit again. Like I was mentioning, you can get both filters with one order. Yeah, this guy, fins were starting to get dirty and collapsed. So it'll be good to get him replaced. Before I uh, put those new filters back in there, I'm gonna grab a, a wet shop rag and kind of clean the dust and the chaff out so that we don't shove any in on the other side of the filter housing where we don't want any of that foreign material. You guys know that we like to write right on the filters when we're putting filters in. That way we know for sure when they were last changed and there's no questioning it this way. Uh, just an easier way to keep track of it. 3276, might be a little hard to see, but we'll make it work. All right, we got our uh, hours written on the filter. Now it's time to install the filters. Like a glove, nice and snug, nice solid fit. There we go, housing's on. And there you go, the air filters are installed and uh, ready for work. Super excited to have those in. Now we don't have to worry about those when it comes time to change oil on this thing. Should be ready to go for a, a summer filled with work and dust and chaff, keeping this engine running nice and smooth. And uh, I know some of you guys might be thinking it, well, uh, how is uh, Friday parts when it comes to pricing? Their pricing is really good and competitive. I was really surprised when I was looking on the website, happily surprised. And I also learned that all their parts have a one-year warranty on them, which I was super excited about. That really uh, makes, uh, makes my life easier and makes me uh, a bit more stress-free to know that uh, where I'm buying the parts, they're going to back it if there is a problem. So I am very happy with that. Now let's uh, move on to the lighting side of the project, which is what I am most excited about. We're going to replace the entire... Uh, housing and the two lights on both sides in the rear and uh, we got to redo the the wiring 
How'd your sawing go, Dad? Sawing's going pretty good. This is a, a bit of a surprise for Dad. Well, look at what I, yeah, what I, I got for us. Yeah, I this box, and I didn't get to the bottom of it, but I thought somebody was doing something. Oh, LED, so we'll be able to see without opening our eyes now. Telling them that this winter, you were doing a lot of manure work in the dark, so this uh, this will be a nice upgrade for that. Well, that's one thing I told Bobcat. The front headlight, headlight stuff ain't too bad because it's tall. It kind of goes over the top stuff. And then my old skid steer had a light like right here, my first one. And they didn't have all this arm stuff, but that would shine over gates. But these back in the gate, they're ridiculous. They're down low, they're dim, they're maybe a little dirtier because of that being low. Well, now, because of Friday parts, we got some uh, LED ones. Yeah, so, wow. Good lighting. I know like when we, like that Farm LM, you know when you're, when you're young, you're a kid and you're out in the field, you think, oh, they got lights, you turn them on, it's all great. And then you stepped up to like, the, my dad had a 656, but up into the early 80s stuff and then it was better. And, and then we had the 7405, I remember, and we added more lights. It was optional stuff. That was back in the late 90s. And I thought, oh, wow, that's really bright. And then we put LEDs up there. And I'm still thinking I have trouble seeing. I think it's, I'm keeping up with my old eyesight. <laughs> this will be a nice, great upgrade. Keep dad going in the dark. Yeah. <laughs> can't stop, can't, no reason to go to sleep because it could still see. Yeah. So now moving on to the light project. To pull out the old light, it was pretty simple being it's pretty beat up. The one uh, light housing's cracked right out of it. And it's just a rubber piece. So it literally, maybe a screwdriver, I guess, if it was stiff in there, but I was able to just pop it right out of there and uh, so we got our one uh, bulb for our red light or our blinker light running light i guess you could say and then we have our other light which is the old halogen light which i'm excited to switch out to leds and this is the one we will need to uh, do some wiring quick and uh, put in the, the new plug to fit our our new uh, led lights and just some quick safety, make sure the machine's off, make sure your power's off, so you don't get uh, electrocuted while you're putting this stuff together. Just a quick. And they click right in. That rubber kind of flexes and then hooks right in there real nice. This bulb should go right in there. Give her a turn. And now here, just gotta take the wire cutters, red to red, black to black, should be good. Now that we got it all tied together, let's uh, test the lights and uh, show you the difference between the, the old ones and the new ones. Just look at the difference between the, the two of them. And then uh, just look at the wall with uh, the left versus the right there. We'll peel our uh, protective uh, film off. Wow, look at the difference. You can't even tell that the light on the right is on. That is one huge upgrade. It's uh, safe to say these lights are gonna work and uh, we're gonna be able to install them correctly. So let's uh, move on to uh, putting the other side on. Okay, I have the lights all finished up in the rear here. I have them installed, wired up, tied up, and now it's time to throw that cover back over the radiator, close the door up, and get a good look at it with everything working like it should, where it should be. Man, am I excited to actually get to use this thing in the dark, because just testing it in the shop here, just the one, it, uh, it's a huge difference compared to before.
Now that everything's finished back there, we are gonna move on to our front lights. If it's anything like installing the backs, we'll be done here in no time. So gotta pull out a bolt down here, one on top, and then I think that uh, should be it. We'll, uh, we'll see what it looks like once we get those uh, bolts out of there. Get an in-cab look of the difference between the two of them. Wow, you can't even see the left side. Okay, let's keep moving and uh, do the other side. To take the old one out, you got a 10 millimeter right here and a 10 millimeter on top. Should just be able to give it a nice wiggle. And there we go, popping right out. Take this weather strip off. And there we are. New lights are installed. Let's uh, turn all of them on and, and get a good look at them. Man, I love the way it turned out. They look super good. They really light up the area. I'm excited to get these out in the dark and try them and uh, really put these lights to work and see how well they hold up. Really happy to have a, a new air filter in this, both a, an inner and an outer air filter. A nice peace of mind there. Huge shout out to Friday Parts for getting us these parts and uh, allowing me to share this with you guys. And if you too wanna check out Friday Parts, I have a link down below in the description. So go check them out at Friday Parts. They got really good prices. Their delivery time was fast. A wide range of parts for multiple different machines, both in agriculture and construction. A lot of heavy machinery parts. And they also have a free one year warranty if your parts were to fail. I love all the perks. So huge shout out to Friday Parts. Go check them out. Like I said, that link is down below in the description. But we're gonna move on from this project back to the Farmall MTA. So we took the charger off maybe an hour or so ago. We got it to start. So I gotta just hook everything back up, make sure that it held a charge long enough here without having the charger on it. And it should have then we can uh, get this thing put away. I ended up getting the whole story about the, the sparks or the smoke. It sounds like they were just trying to jump it and throw too much power at it at one time, which is, uh, it's good to know that we weren't having a short somewhere that it was just them rushing it and not uh, being patient when it came to jump starting it. So we're gonna put this all back together, get this tractor put away. Glad to see that solved the problem. Hopefully it was just because uh, of those lights that got installed on it a month or two ago. Maybe somebody accidentally left them on too long or when they were working on it or something like that. Drained the battery, parked it, then it got cold. So if it dies on us again and it's dying on us during the summer, we'll throw a new battery in. But right now we're just gonna run it. As for that starter, talking to dad, it sounds like he uh, was calling around, called our local starter shop, and uh, it sounds like they got one. So uh, that's some good news that uh, we got one of those starters nearby. So the next time we're over in that neck of the woods, we'll pick that up. Well, let's go move that uh, MTA and uh, park it away for the night.
Looks like we're just about out of fuel, so hopefully I can get this thing started long enough to get it up by the fuel barrel. We're right in the yard, so ain't got too far to go. It's looking like we're gonna have to grab a, a gas can. Well, it's nice to have all those projects done for the day. I'm gonna end off the video here. Go check out Friday Parts. I'll have that linked down in the description. Also remember to subscribe and share the videos if you haven't already. And uh, we will see you all next time.